close my way, you are still girl. Hey, hey. Intentional, intentional girl. Everything is working out for my good. Uh, you love me too much, oh, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh, uh, you love me too much, oh, you love me too much, oh, excess love, oh. Unconditionally love, thank you for loving me too much. Oh. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh. Unconditionally, thank you for loving me too much. Oh. Thank you for loving me. Where would I have been? Where would I have been without you? You love me too much, oh. Oh, Kakame, Nahim, you be. You are A to Z, and everything in between, no. I'm a mama's, mama's, yo. Now you be the most high king. Eche to be zike. Odiro ye di kaki. Amama masya masyo. Now you be the most high king. Eche to be zike. Odiro ye di kaki. Now I'm standing here only because you made. Now I'm standing here only because you made. Now I'm standing here only because you made a way. Dependable, dependable God It doesn't matter what comes my way You are still God Intentional, intentional God Everything is working out for my good Dependable, dependable God It doesn't matter what comes my way You are still God Intentional, intentional God Everything is working out for my good Uh, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh, uh, you love me too much, oh, you love me too much, oh, excess love, oh. Unconditionally love, thank you for loving me too much. Thank you for loving me too much. Unconditionally love, thank you for loving me too much.
unconditionally Thank you for loving me so much Thank you for loving me Where would I have been, where would I have been without you You love me too much Oh kakame na him you be You are A to Z and everything in between no I'm a mama sama so na you be the most high king E che to biezike o diro ye di ka I'm a mama, I'm a Now you'll be the most high king. Eche to biezike, adiro ye dika. Now I'm standing here only because you made. Now I'm standing here. Only because you made Now I'm standing here Only because you made a way broadcast today. Thank you, Lord, that we are here. It's been a minute, but we are so excited to be back. I know just bear witness with us, bear, not witness, but bear with us because we've had some schedule, schedule changes uh, uh, that needed to make these kind of moves where we're having service back to back. But I do want to say hello to you and thank you for joining in with us today. And all of you that will join in in the rebroadcast, Welcome. We're excited to have you. For many of you that already know that I am Prophetess Bridget Barnes, for those of you that do not know, I am the founder and senior leader of Mastering Life God's Way Equipping Ministries, as well as Bridget Barnes Ministries in Bakersfield, California. We want to thank all of you that pray with us and not just with us, but for us. We solicit your prayers to help us continue to be strengthened, to carry on the assignment that God has given us 
in this hour. Sundays at 2 currently, you know, 2 p.m. Pacific time is twice a month at this moment. This month, we will have virtual meetings twice back to back. I want you to take note, the next scheduled service will be March the 27th, next Sunday. Hallelujah. And then for the month of April, because we'll be doing a little bit of traveling, we're adjusting the schedule again. And Sundays at 2 will be back to back. They will be these dates, April 10th and April 17th. Remember, 2 p.m. Pacific time. We encourage those of you who haven't yet followed us, please share this broadcast right now with your friend, family, and friends. And even afterwards, if you watch it on the rebroadcast, share it, share it, and share it. But we encourage you, if you have not began to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all of our social media uh, platforms, subscribe to our YouTube channels. They're Mastering Life God's Way, of course, Equipping Ministry, but also Bridget Barnes Ministry, so you can be notified. We are trying to put content in all of those places so nothing will be left unturned or, or anybody being left out if they want to attend these virtual broadcasts. Um, we want to also be able to notify you of future events, uh, different prayer times, uh, re, uh, specific prayer times that we come together at Tuesday at 2 p.m., as well as any master classes in the future coming up this year. Hallelujah. And then we are uh, want you to know and fill our hearts that we are committed. We're committed to God and we're committed to fulfilling the call on our lives in this equipping ministry. We will continue to notify you. We try our best to do it at least a week ahead of time before the broadcast or the Zoom meetings. Remember, continue to join us at Sundays at 2, live on only Facebook and our YouTube channels. For all of you who support us financially, uh, right now we say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it with everything in us to continue to uh, spread the gospel gospel in the good news of Jesus Christ and his kingdom throughout the world. Whoever that God sends to our channel to hear the message that he gives us, uh, whether we're uh, virtual now or in person, we thank you for your support. Those of, you, those of you that want to know how you can help us, you can give on these channels uh, uh, or giving platforms, cash app, dollar sign, MLGW, Bakersfield, and Venmo, Apricent, MLGW, Bakersfield. Those of you who want to give Zelle, we also have an availability through email, Mastering Life, God's Way, at Gmail. We love you, and we so appreciate you all who support us. Now it's time to go to the scriptures today to open up the service. Turn your Bibles to Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Let us see Jesus and put Jesus before us as we go forward so that we can continue to see him and uh, positions our, ourselves so that he would speak to us in this time we dedicated to him. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Hallelujah. Philippians 2. It says, therefore, if there is any encouragement and comfort in Christ, as there certainly is in abundance. If there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship that we share in the spirit, if there is any great depth of affection and compassion, make my joy, Paul says, complete by being of the same mind. Just thinking about that supernatural unity just brings a sense of peace and well-being in our spirits as we come together by the Spirit joining us with the bond of peace. Having the same love toward one another, knit together in spirit, intent on one purpose, and living a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel the good news regarding salvation through faith in Christ. 
It says, do nothing from selfishness uh, or empty conceit through factional motives or strife. Mm. That's talking about division, broken up things. Oh, we don't do that over here. Listen, the gospel is the same. Jeez. Jesus Christ does not change. He is the foundation of what he is doing. It says, but with an attitude of humility, being neither arrogant nor self-righteous, regard others as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interests of others. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yes. Have the same attitude in yourselves, mm. which was in Christ Jesus. Paul just set the standard yes. for how we should live our lives and desire to walk out to be, not for trying to be like somebody else that you may admire in the world, but Jesus is our standard. And it does not look like the standard of the world because the world tells you the opposite of what Jesus showed us through his own life, how it is to be, what it is acceptable to God. It says, has this same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, look to him as your example in selfless humility. Who, although he existed in the form an unchanging essence of God is one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attribute, attributes, the entire nature of deity. Hallelujah. Did not regard equality with God mm. a thing to be grasped or asserted as if he did not already possess it. Hallelujah. Or was afraid of losing it. That's why Jesus Christ was what? When he walked on the earth, he was fully human Hallelujah. and fully divine, dimensioning none in either way. He didn't feel like he lost anything of who he was to come here, but emptied himself without renouncing or diminishing his deity. See how the scriptures make it clear, but only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine equality and his rightful dignity by assuming the form of a bond servant uh, and being made in the likeness of men. You talk about God, being God yeah, and being made uh, in the likeness, uh, uh, hallelujah, of a bond servant mm. of mankind. He became completely human, Jesus. but was that but was without sin, being fully God, yes. fully man. After he was found in terms of his outward appearance as a man for a divinely appointed time, he humbled himself still further Jesus. by becoming obedient to the Father to the point of death, ah. even death on a cross, which had purpose. And we stand here today for the purpose in which he died, hey, hallelujah, on the cross, being put to shame, taking our shame, Jesus. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your word said, if he be lifted up, if yes, I be lifted yes, up, yes. it will be him that draw all men unto himself. For this reason also, because he obeyed and so completely humbled himself, God has a highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. This is why we know there's power in the blood that was shed on yes. Calvary that never runs dry. And there is power in the name of Jesus. Listen what verse 10 says. So that at the name of Jesus, yes. every knee bow shall bow in submission of those who are in heaven and on earth yes. and under the earth and that every tongue every tongue will confess Amen. and openly not being ashamed of the gospel not being ashamed to say it regardless of what the circumstance may come in your life you want to be able to call on his name and receive him as your lord and savior yes. hallelujah on this side of eternity i'm gonna keep preaching it i'm gonna keep preaching it hallelujah until one day someone decides when they hear it they will no longer harden their heart it says and openly acknowledge that jesus christ is lord sovereign god Jesus. to the glory of 
God the Father. So then, my dear ones, so then, my dear ones, Paul says, just as you have always obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm, not in a rebellious spirit, or this is their leader representing Christ in his life so they can follow the Christ that's inside of him and obey. And he's making mention of that, that you've been enthusiastic about it, not only in my presence, but now more, much more in my absence. Jesus. He says, continue to work out your salvation. Ah. Mm. That is cultivated, bring it to full effect, actively mm. pursue spiritual maturity. Let me, maturity. Let me say that again. My, my. Actively, Jesus. actively, bring it in full effect, actively pursue spiritual maturity and all inspired fear and trembling using serious caution huh. and critical self evaluation. Mm. We must be able to not be self biased about your oh own God. self. Oh we have to get to a point our transparency will be able to look in the mirror Jesus. If Michael Jackson can write a song, I'm going to start and look in the man in the mirror. The believers, every one of us, Ooh. must be able to come to a point Jesus. that we can self-evaluate ourselves, leaving nothing, withholding nothing, and allowing the Holy Spirit to conform us more into the image of our elder brother. Jesus Christ is said to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Christ. Is that important to you? Jesus. And, and, and I, to be responsible and grow up enough that you understand when we do fall short, even though God forgives us and cleanses us, Jesus. we are offending him mm. and bringing God. dishonor to the name of Christ Jesus. Oh, and it says, for it is not your strength, but it is God who yes. is yes. effectively at work in you. Yes. And I, both to will and to Hallelujah. work, that is strengthening Hallelujah. Yes. Energizing. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And created in you and I. I'm, I'm adding emphasis because I is not in the scripture. The longing and the ability oh, to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. Yes. That he gets the glory. It says do everything without murmuring or questioning the providence of God. He will provide. We went over that yesterday when we had a meeting. He will provide all in his Kairos time, in his perfect time. He is our providence. He is our sustenance. Yes. Hallelujah. So that you may prove yourselves to be blameless and guiltless innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish in the midst of a morally crooked and spiritually perverted generation. He wrote that hundreds of years ago and is still in effect today. Thank you, among Jesus. whom you are seen as bright lights. Mm. See, we should be shining really, really bright wow. right now in the darkness that exists in our world. Beacon shining out clearly in the world of darkness, holding out and offering to everyone what? The word of life. You want to live? Is Jesus Christ the yeah, yes. living word, the word of yes. God, the gospel, the good news? It's all found in Jesus Christ. So yes. that in the day of Christ, I will have reason to rejoice greatly, Paul is saying, because I did not I did not run my race in vain. Thank you, Lord nor labor without results. Ooh. Everybody that I'm talking to right now know you feel like whatever you have done, whatever you do do, say in part, that's even in the world. Mm -hmm. Unbelievers, they don't want to do from day to day what they are doing and let the labor and the work that they put in be in vain uh -huh. to be useless Bring no profit, bring no mm. dividend, bring no benefit, mm. bring no return. We as Christians, as we oh. continue to go forth and preach the word Jesus. of God, we don't want our lives God. to be taken in vain my of God, no purpose God, or useless. God. And he's telling us, hallelujah, hallelujah, what needs to be done. But if hallelujah. I am being poured out, Paul says, as a drink offering on the Ooh. sacrifice and service of your faith for preaching the message of mm. salvation, Hallelujah. Still, he says. Still, Still he says, I rejoice and share my joy with you all. Mm -hmm. You too rejoice in what we're going through. Hallelujah. Ooh. In the same way, as he's saying he's rejoicing, we know Paul was in jail most of the time when he was writing letters to the church. 
And in the same way, he said, share your joy ah. with me. What a blessing it is yes, for Lord. us to have the word to remind us Amen. there is power yes. of the Holy Spirit to cause us to complete and accomplish the work that Jesus said, mm. I will complete the work, mm. the good work of I salvation that. that I started within each and every one oh, of us because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's yes. pray. Father God, we come before you because oh, you. this day is holy unto our Lord. This is the reason why we will not worry. We will ah, not fret. We will not be afraid today. We will not be disheartened. We will not ah, be discouraged, but we choose to rejoice. We choose to praise God. Hallelujah. In the valley lows, in the mount highs, no matter what's oh, going yes, on, we're going to use our mouth. We're going to allow Jesus. praise Thank to continually Jesus. come, be in our mouth. Oh, we are going to praise the God that nothing that is going on right now is throwing him off his Jesus. throne. Can you put your oh, hands God. together where you are? Let us magnify oh, the Lord yeah, God. together. Let us come into the house of the Lord oh, and praise yes, him. Lord. Let us give him what he's due. Oh, All yes, the God. honor and majesty, oh, hallelujah, and glory that is due to our living God hallelujah that is always working on our behalf we ask you God to inhabit the praises of your people here wherever who's listening where they are we asking for a weighty presence of your glory hallelujah to come in the house hallelujah yes. that your fire will fall upon us and Ooh. those that are listening hallelujah and we'll listen that your fire will fall not a fire that we have already experienced Ooh, fresh. we're talking about a fresh fire yes. that will cause us to burn with Ooh. fresh passion for our lord and savior jesus christ in his kingdom that will cause us to be on fire uh, to energize us like he said to strengthen us yes. and cause us to recognize yes. what his desire is in our lives Ooh. and in matches up with the desire hallelujah that he has for us in heaven that we know we are under the will of god and we will not fail because he is here hallelujah because we so we can move forward not on our own might not in our own ability but by the power that's why he told them to go to the upper room and wait on the spirit we know holy spirit is within him but we need the tangible outpouring of his spirit so that we can serve Hallelujah, who he's ordained us to serve. Hallelujah, we just praise you right now, Lord. We glory you, right, glorify you right now, Father God. And our anticipation is thick in this place. I hope it's thick where you are. Hallelujah, that if it's healing that you need, you can receive it today. Hallelujah, if it's finances right you need, provision that you need, you can receive it today. If it's breakthroughs that you need, you can receive it today. Hallelujah, if it's deliverance that you need, even from your own self-idolatry, you can receive it today. Because Jesus is in this place. Holy Spirit is in this place. Hallelujah. And he is on point today. And he is ready to do whatever is necessary in and through our lives. This is why we give him full permission to wreck it, to break it, to destroy everything that is not of God. So God can mold and he can put us back on the potter's wheel and mold us and shape us for this season. For this season as a good vessel noble vessel to be used to carry the glory overflowing into the areas that we represent the geographical borders that we re represent even right now even through the airways hallelujah we pray father we bless you. there's no distance in prayer mm. and father god let your glory flow yeah. through these airways yeah. and take over yeah. Lives today oh. take over, oh. hallelujah. Let us receive as He's pouring out upon us Ooh. in the mighty name of Jesus. We refuse today to go forward until we get our measure, and we want to be full to the overflow that He promises that He'll go exceedingly above anything we ask, think, or imagine according to the Spirit, His power that He placed in us. Hallelujah. So we're gonna take it to our penthouse, hallelujah. Our penthouse, uh, uh expectation so he can go exceedingly above that and release more healing in our land, oh God. You said if we pray and we humble ourselves and we seek your face 
that we turn from our wicked ways, that you would hear from heaven and forgive us of our sins, and you will heal the land, heal the land, heal the land, not just in the nation of the United States, but heal the land across the nations, oh God. Hallelujah. We submit to your perfect will. That's why we pray. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Your way of doing things come. Your will come. Jesus. On earth as it is in heaven concerning us in this day. Because tomorrow will have its own issues and problems. And you promise it's grace for that. Father God, we want our portion for grace to navigate through the day. We decree victory. We decree it to be done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Where you are, put your hands together and keep on expecting God. I have faith that he's going to do exceedingly above. And we will never be the same because we've been touched by God. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and join in with us for our very own Sister Michelle Pettigrew as she leads us further into the presence of God with praise and worship. It just speaks about how the living creatures are just singing holy, holy, holy to the Lord. And just even as the elders hear that, they cast their crowns before yeah. God. And so I uh, I just want to read verse 11, which reads, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive the glory and the honor and the power. For you created all things, and because of you will they exist. And we're created and brought into beings. So just as we go into worship today, I just want us to just keep yes, that in mind, God, yes. that he is worthy of it all. Yes, he is worthy yes, to be praised. Yes, yes God.
Jesus, we bless you, Hallelujah. Yes, yes, we bless you, Lord. We bless Jesus, you, Jesus. Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, bless you, Lord. Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just take a moment. Take a moment and meditate. Hallelujah. Upon what just happened. Just praises and exhortation of our Lord. We're here to worship. In everything that we do, Father, we pray. Everything that we say, Father, we pray. That it will be acceptable in your sight. Yes. And be considered worship unto you. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. Ah. Oh, you're worthy, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, he's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. worthy. He's worthy. Ah, we give worthy. you thanks. We give you praise. Yes. You've been so, so good, so good and kind thank to you, us and towards us. Oh, and we thank you for it, God. Don't let us take you for granted. Yes. Don't so let us please. not re remember. Ooh, all God. those cause us not to forget Jesus. all of our benefits mm. that we received through Jesus Christ. We give you the glory. Oh, we glory. 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 always glory. give you the yes. glory. Yeah, yeah. Of your goodness, of your faithfulness towards your service, towards your people, towards your children. You are just that awesome. Yes. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do today. So thank you, Sister Michelle, for allowing God to use you once again. Hallelujah. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Let's get to the word. Hallelujah. As many of you know, part of the broadcast, part of this flow, and part of my assignment that's been given to me and with the ministry is to go through the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Apostles, and begin to revisit what God did during the early church, the birthing, and what he did, and who he raised up, and who he anointed, and who he commissioned, and who he appointed. And, and how he brought increase and how the Holy Spirit was active as he is still active in the earth. And we want to see, take another look into the book of Acts, Luke's record, record of what happened during that time. The last episode, the title, I believe, was What Are You Waiting For? 
We looked at Cornelius. We looked at the first Gentile household being led uh, to Christ by the orchestration of the Holy Spirit. He he got a people ready and a group of people in the Aryan region, region ready for the message. He's doing the same thing. He's doing the same thing now. He's getting people wooing by the Holy Spirit, getting their hearts ready to when they hear the word, one day they will answer yes. Hallelujah. That's what we're believing for even today. That is somebody's day to say yes to the Lord. Somebody's day of salvation. Peter begins to give a report to Jerusalem in the first part of chapter 11, and he reiterated uh, everything that had happened uh, from Cornelius and what the Spirit did. And we want to get back to reading that portion, but I want us to read our text and look at our text today, which will be the conclusion of chapter 11 and of uh, it is part 11 of our journey, so we can prepare ourselves to go into chapter 12. All right, Lord, Holy Spirit, speak. Yes. And give us ears to hear, starting at verse 19, because we're looking at the church at Antioch. We'll realize its position in the record of the church being built up uh, from that time until now in different regions. And so let's read Acts 11, chapter 19. I'm reading from the Amplified Version, and it says, So then, since they were unaware of these developments, those who were scattered because of the persecution is going back now to remember Stephen's stoning, and it's scattered. Hallelujah. So there was a group of them that was part of that scattering out of Jerusalem because of the persecution that occurred in connection, there it is, to the stoning of Stephen. They traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch. But listen, without telling the message of salvation through Christ to anyone except Jews. Now we go into verse 20 and it tells us, but there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene. Don't miss the fact that the above verse did not mention Cyrene, but they were scattered all about in the region. Hallelujah. It might not have mentioned it, but that doesn't make Cyrene not a legitimate place or city that they might have scattered into preaching the gospel. Just stay with the flow. Who came to Antioch? So there was, it seems like there was another group. We'll get into it. I just want to read through it and begin speaking to the Greek as well, proclaiming to them the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the hand, the hand, hallelujah, Acts 1 and 8 is all through Acts. And the hand and the power and presence of the Lord was with them. And what happened And a great number who believed Turn to the Lord for salvation, accepting and drawing near to Jesus as Messiah and Savior. The news of this reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw, he saw whatever was taking place in the atmosphere, he perceived the grace of God that was bestowed on them. He rejoiced, ha, he rejoiced and began to encourage them all with an unwavering heart to stay true and devoted to the Lord. For Barnabas was a good man, privately and publicly. He just didn't act out like many of the hypocrites that Jesus uh, definitely uh, admonished in his day that you acting, you may be whitewashed on the external, but you're like rotten bones inside. But this, for Barnabas, one of the disciples from Jerusalem, was a good man. Privately and publicly, his godly character benefited both him and others. Can your godly character benefit uh, not just yourself, but others? Yes, it can. And he was what? He was full of the Holy Spirit, and he was full of faith in Jesus Christ. Let me repeat that. He was full of the Holy Spirit, and full of faith in Jesus Christ, the Messiah through whom believers have everlasting life. And a great number increases all the way through this, but is connected to the Holy Ghost. 
Okay, a great number of people were brought to the Lord. And Barnabas left for Tarsus. See how the take note as I begin to break down these verses, how uh, uh, the, the writer of Acts Luke is shifting. He keeps shifting. So we may think, oh, it's next verse to next verse. But even from one and two, the, the research and the theologians say it's about eight or nine years between those two verses. So let's continue. And Barnabas left for Tarsus to search for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him back to Antioch. For an entire year, they met with others in the church and instructed large numbers. And it was in Antioch, remember this, that the disciples were first called Christians. Now at this time, it shifts again. Now at this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. What did they do? One of them named Agabus stood up and prophesied through the Holy Spirit that a severe famine would come on the entire world. And this did happen during the reign of Claudius. So the disciples decided to send a contribution. See how they responded? Come on now. Each according to his individual ability to the believers who lived in Judea. And this they did sending the contribution to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Father God, this is your word. It is anointed by itself. It is that which you spoke. You spoke. It is written, hallelujah, that grass will wither and flowers may fade, will fade, but your word will remain forever. Hallelujah. We understand that. Man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God speak to us through this message allow us to receive an impartation of what you want us to understand and continue to lay the foundation and see what you were doing to understand more about what you are doing in the earth in our generation today in the mighty name of Jesus let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight my Lord and my Redeemer. In Jesus' name, I pray, we pray. Amen and amen. We know that the, the church at Antioch is about the planting of the first Gentile church. It is noted to be in the city of Antioch where believers also were first called Christians, which simply means Christ followers. This text today is just going to help us merge into chapter 12, which also changes scenes again. It shifts us into the time where back to Peter and more persecution to the body of Christ. But let's look at what God has for us in this message. We now know that Peter was used to forerun the preaching of the gospel spreading the good news of Jesus Christ as Savior to whoever would believe throughout the Gentile communities and regions. We want to take note and pin that the fact that there were other Gentile proselytes, that the Jews were taking them through Judaism, but not a household a Gentile being converted and friends in this area. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch that Philip uh, 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 minister to and gain more understanding. Remember him, hallelujah, where he accepted Jesus in his heart. Now we understand the Cornelius and his family and the friends were the foundation of larger groups of different people groups. Gentiles believing and accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Freely, Peter, a Jew, God used to forerun. We know now, some of us know, that Paul had been primarily called to ministers to, to, um, to the Gentile or the Greeks or all the other people groups. They received the Holy Spirit. It noted, if you see in verse 18, when they heard this, that they received the Holy Spirit just as they did, Hallelujah. When they heard the message and received, Jesus said, when they heard this in verse 18 of chapter 11 and in the book of Acts, when they heard this, they quieted down and glorified and praised God, saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance. 
This is the apostles, the leaders in Jerusalem that came into agreement with that the Gentiles had a right to the message of Jesus Christ to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior and receive eternal life through repentance. Hallelujah. And the benefits that they were privy to. In the summary of the last broadcast, I want us to read those few verses starting at verse 15 that would merge into 18 and bring us into our text today. And starting at 15, it says, this is part of where Peter went to the apostles. Remember, because uh, Barnabas, uh, that was up before, but Peter went to the apostles and he said, uh, and gave a record of what had happened with Cornelius because they had uh, really charged him for eating and sit sitting with people that were considered unclean. And he said, when I began to speak, speak, when he began to speak, when he began to preach the gospel, when he began to preach the word of God to them, it said the Holy Spirit fell and the Holy Spirit would not fall if it's not in agreement with what is being spoken. He said the Holy Spirit fell on them just as he did on us us at the beginning at Pentecost. Then I remembered the word. This is what Peter was saying, the word of the Lord, how he used to say, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So if God gave Gentiles the same gift equally as he gave us after we accepted and believed and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, who was I? I love that. Who were we to get in God's way in, in uh, 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 bringing the message to somebody you may not think? I mentioned last time about how, uh, was it uh, Jonah? It was Jonah that didn't want to go to Nineveh because he didn't want the people to hate them, want God to show mercy towards them. I hope there's nobody out there. I hope there's nobody out there today as a believer that will not go where God sent us because just maybe it's somebody that you don't like or it's some people's group you're not, you know, uh, privy to or you don't like or you think you're better than them or whatever. So God sends you to them and you don't want to go because you feel like in your self-righteousness, I'm good and I don't want them to get God's mercy and grace. But God said to Moses, I'll show my mercy and extend my mercy to whomever I please. We better be ready to be agents and ambassadors of Christ and get our biases and get what we may think and what we may feel people not worthy to receive the message and, and the glory and the salvation and deliverance and healing just like we have the life of God to live in us. If you have it in flourishing, it should be a desire in each one of our hearts to want that for those that are walking around wandering and lost and don't. And you need to understand that some know we're telling the truth and they are blatantly rejecting Christ in this hour. Some don't know. There is still some ignorant of the scriptures, ignorant of just the message of the gospel. We have an, we have an opportunity and responsibility to keep preaching, keep speaking, keep saying it, and doing it out loud with no apology. That's not wild. Just tell the truth in love. Like many years, I used to uh, make it, you know, I apologize because I'm preaching. I'm a preacher. Preachers preach. How can they hear? Uh -huh. How can they believe unless they hear? And how can they hear without a preacher? So preachers arise. Once again, I'm calling out. I'm speaking to that that's which in you that you've been appointed to do. Because God have need of you in this hour to preach the word, to submit yourself to be discipled. So you can preach the truth to others that they will be delivered and experience the life, the Zoe life that Jesus came and gave to us by his spirit. I just got happy. I hope not by myself. I don't feel like in the room. But we need to understand and also take note that the planning of the church could have taken place where Cornelius lived in Caesarea. But no, God had different plans. He did not... Uh, 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 plant the first Gentile church where the first Gentile family was converted. But God ordained for Antioch to be the place. What kind of city during that time was Antioch? It had a, a moderate community of Jews about, they say in the research, about 25,000 Jews in that area, but it was 500,000 in population. That means 475,000 
thousand people were considered having the need of conversion in different people's groups, various people's groups. During that time, it was known for its business center, its trade center. It was prosperous. It was planted by a river. We know anything by the water will live. We know anything planted by water or stationed by water is going to flourish. Hallelujah. But it was also and more known for its moral decay. With the idol worship of Diana and Apollo, with temple prostitutes and temple prostitution being part of the worship of the idols. So it became more popular. Come on now. In Antioch than anything else. In thinking about that, you would say, oh, this is prime. This is a prime area for Jesus to show up. This is a prime area, like uh, the whole wide world. I understand. But you're talking about, I'm going to give an opportunity to those who have not heard of me in the context of now you can have me, you can believe in me and accept me in a dark place. Why would not God release the message that brings light into the hearts of those who have been veiled by the darkness of Satan in that area? This is a prime city for breakthrough and revival, an ideal place for Jesus the Christ to be made known hallelujah to all his saving power come on now the message is the power to save the message of the gospel yes, so now let's take a little time and talk a little bit about what is meant to plant a church we understand that people say oh i'm planting churches that's a whole nother different description or context on how we see it today on how it was and looked at and defined it it was in the early church. And I said that it changed. You know, God doesn't change. So that means we must have changed something or something changed. He, does, he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So what I'm going to tell you about the early church, you can take it with salt, a grain of salt, or you can just look at it, or you can look at our society today and our generation from our religious community and see whether or not we need to allow God to align some stuff, Okay. Hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus. So what it meant to plant a church in the days of the early church. To plant a church did not look like what we are accustomed to today. The believers had no separate Christian church buildings where they met. Let me, let me, wait a minute. I'm not saying nothing. I said take it with a grain of salt if you want to. But back then when the church was birthed, when it was early, Holy Spirit was working. Power was showing up every time. Demonstrations were following the preaching of the word. Not sometimes, but all the time. People were coming by the droves, accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. God was increasing by the day. And they had no separate Christian church buildings where they met. They had no large congregations with a pastor and staff because not saying they didn't have leaders and instructors. They, this is on the onset. We're going back in and I believe God is taking us through this to see where he started. And some of we weren't back there then. So we won't know if we begin and we are neglecting to study history, church history, and the biblical history. They had no large congregations that said because they were Jews and they, they continued to just go ahead and worship in the synagogues on the Sabbath. When they met for fellowship, which included to pray, to worship, where they would share the word of the Lord, and they would have communion, where most people would think breaking the bread is going to sit at the nearest restaurant and let's just talk about the Bible, Doc. It's about communion, taking the bread and drinking of the wine and just even that, it brings us together as we took it yesterday. It's a common union that we say we believe Jesus died for our sins and God raised him on the third day and he told us as often as you do it, remember, hallelujah, what he took in his body was for us. The bloodshed was for us. It wasn't something that he did. It was because of our affliction. Our sin. Breaking bread together with other believers or Messianic Jews. And they did it in their homes because as they were coming to Christ, they realized God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. We don't need to be associated to the traditions of men that were there because Jesus, 
hallelujah, is now getting ready to build a dwelling place to lay his head. Y'all not, y'all are not here. This is where the purpose of the body of Christ is. It is now us being temples of the living God. Like he said, I have nowhere. The son of man have nowhere to lay his head. He does now. And that's the church. That's the body, his people. Let's go on. The Greek word for church is ecclesia. It simply means assembly, gathering. Or the people of God, the called out ones. Are you one of the called out ones at this time? When we come together, God looks upon us. I don't care if it's at the street corner. I don't care. I'm not saying, you know, doing bad things at the street corner. I'm saying wherever we come together, wherever we assemble and we the called out ones, hallelujah, where we gather, whether it's in the building or whether it's on virtual, hallelujah, we are the people of God and he looks at us and sees upon us as that's my church. So church planting at to them at that time meant to proclaim the gospel in word and deed to gather those who, like the leaders, believed into fellowship groups, meeting in various homes. So believers in a particular city, whichever geographical location that you, we are ordained at this season, we are planted at this season. God wants to establish us to advance his kingdom, preaching the gospel, telling people about the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and offering them life in a drink of the living water. <laughs> so believers in a particular city who were called followers of Jesus were the church in that particular city or region. Now, let's go to our text. Verse 19, I braid brought some emphasis towards um, there were two seeming like evangelistic groups went to Antioch. I also bring reference to in the research, it just didn't happen two weeks apart from each other, these two verses. They had did the legwork. They had really pursued in that region, preaching and teaching every day. It could have been between eight or nine years before the men from Cyprus and Cyrene decided to come into Antioch too. Because number one, the ones that were scattered, that verse nine that talks about, they only told the message to the Jews. They only told the message to the Jews. They really didn't understand the implications of Peter's uh, converting the household of Cornelius. They were still doing and talking about Jesus, but still uh, 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 believing that the Gentile needed to be circumcised. There was a whole bunch of stuff going on that Luke didn't talk about in between the lines, but they only still felt like the message was to the Jews. Verse 20 now gives light to the men that are talking about that came from Cyprus and Serene, uh, Serene, Serene, came to Antioch. They now comes to Antioch and they preach to the Greek there as well. So we understand, they. we can say they understood Peter's assignment and they understood their assignment. Not saying that it was Greek only, they included whosoever would believe in the message because he understood it was available to all now they did. Verse 21, and it makes light to where the Holy Ghost, where we need the power to do anything for God that we need. We want increase, we want effectiveness, we want the finishing anointing that we need. We want the anointing that completes what God wants to do through the purpose in which we're meeting today. And anything that we're doing day to day. So if he says the hand, it says in the hand, the power in the presence. That's what the hand means. When the hand of the Lord comes upon us, it means that his presence is upon us. It means that his power is upon us. It means that whatever that he wants to do in his power and presence, he can do through his people. And because of that, it says, because the presence and power was with them, a great number who believed turned to the Lord because they were preaching to everybody. And some believed and they came to the Lord for salvation and received him as their Messiah and Savior. And of course, we know through the history as we've gone through the books of Acts every time. You need to understand when the Holy Ghost show up, it's just not logos. It's just not logos. They're not just teaching. It means it was some miracle signs and wonders that were going on because God was moving by 
the spirit. That's where increase comes when it says not by power and not by might, but by my spirit that he even told Zechariah, you're not going to be able to do what I told you to do. Not by your power. Not I don't care how many people you take a census and try to gather together, but if you need the spirit of God, the power of God that was doing that. So God was moving. We have to believe that because the presence was the supernatural uh, uh, miracles and wonders were taking place. Also, the Holy Spirit empowered them. Remember, they're coming from different cultures. So he also empowered them to now having another language and another culture, but supernaturally being able to communicate with different people in the, in the midst of the way that they're living, different people's groups in that region. Speaking of the good news in a way that they would understand it and be able to believe it. We know that comes by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, but you got to hear the word in a way that the Spirit can move on your heart. That it was inviting them into also a relationship with him that they previously wasn't able to come to. We know John 3 and 16 says, whosoever, that Jesus died for the world. Verse 23, 22 tells us, yeah, that news, y'all know it got loud. People start talking about, did you hear? Did you see? Did you see the wonders? And this person got healed and God showed up and they're starting to speak in tongues just like we are. Well, Jerusalem heard about it. Judea heard about it. And after hearing about God moving upon the messengers and allowing them to do that and bring an increase, the men of Cyprus and Serene in Antioch, which included Syrians, Greek, and Romans, people's groups. And a great number of them believed, the scripture says, Hallelujah, verse 21, they heard about that. So the scriptures tells us in 22, they sent a representative from Jerusalem. <laughs> Go down there and see what's going on. But thank God they sent somebody with a great reputation, okay? Let's read 23 and look in 23 again. They sent Barnabas. And remember, if we go down, Barnabas was the one in Acts 9 that the other disciples were, were afraid to deal with Saul, remember? And Barnabas said, okay, I'm a, I'm come with me. I'm going to present you to the apostles. It was uh, Acts 9 and starting at, I believe, verse 27. And he said, however, Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and described to them how Saul had seen. He spoke of Saul on Saul's behalf to get the apostles in Jerusalem to say, okay, we receive him in. Now we see Jerusalem sends Barnabas to Antioch at that time. And he says, when he arrived, he saw that the atmosphere was different. He walked up in something and realized this city is known for its immor immorality and its decay and idolatry. Now all of a sudden, you can feel the grace of God. You, you know that God's love is showing in and through the people. You can see that. And now Barnabas, he gets happy. He, he, he rejoices. Do we rejoice when we see others coming to Christ and being on fire for the Lord and preaching the truth? We should be rejoicing. It should call, cause our inner man to smile when we see, hallelujah, other brothers and sisters that are on fire for the Lord and bringing others and showing love. It's walking in and living in the love of God and the grace of God and being extended. Barnabas rejoiced and he began to encourage them because he understands we have to encourage new believers. Listen, y'all need to keep on walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to grow up to continue walking. You got to continue to encourage people. Put your head up. You need to stay faithful. Hallelujah. Remember when, when Jesus talks about uh, come to the church and tell them you forgot your first love. You'll be on fire when you first come for Christ. And Barnabas said, listen, y'all need to stay devoted, stay true, <clears throat> excuse me, to this message and what God is saying to us and devoted to the Lord in, in work and deed. Yes. So it talks about Barnabas very, very, very familiar with uh, Stephen, the same way they spoke of Stephen that was stoned. And they began to, <coughs> excuse me, we need to also pin that and understand that Barnabas represented the apostolic that was now coming into the presence of that area. The apostolic, he was apostolic representation coming into that area. He was commissioned, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
also you will see with the Holy Spirit, him being full of Holy Spirit and being full of faith. He was a man that was considered a God of godly character in private and per in, in public. And he was full, just like Stephen was full. And Stephen was doing miracles and wonders, full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith in Jesus Christ, the description likened unto the deacon. We know full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith would let us know the implications that he also moved just supernatural ability while he, he was preaching in Antioch when he got there. Because at the end of verse 24, it says, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Apostolic presence and representation is there. Now he's preaching also with the men of Serene and Cyrus, with those that are there. It also, God put the wind on it, the breath on it and more people gave their life to Christ when Barnabas showed up applies that he was moved with a supernatural ability and the all-sufficient faith described by Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 and 2 when it refers to is a faith to move mountains and it says that if I have in the description of without love what we do is a bunch of noise and first 1 Corinthians 13 and 2 with emphasis on the C portion, but the verse says, and if I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people and understand all mysteries, it's given a list or numerating some of the gifts of the, the spirit and possess all the knowledge. And here it is, and if I have all sufficient faith so that I can move mountains. That's a supernatural faith. You can't conjure that up. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And even Jesus spoke of in Mark 11, the unshakable faith. If you have unshakable faith in God, you can use your mouth, long as it's in the will of God and you do it without doubt, you can speak to that mountain and he says, it shall be removed. That's Mark 11, 22 and 23, it says Jesus replied, first of all, telling us, have faith in God constantly. That means we should be growing in faith. We know faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we have to always continuously be in the word to keep strong faith uh, and get to the point that we are growing in the faith because we have it in God constantly. He said, if you do that, you sin that I assure you, Jesus is saying, I'm promising you, and I most solemnly say to you, you can trust what I'm getting ready to say right here. Whoever says, use your mouth to this mountain, to this obstacle, to this delay, to this distraction, to this uh, 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 thing that is stopping you from moving forward, this, this particular spirit that is causing bondage and barrenness and unfruitfulness, you can speak to it like he spoke to that fig tree. Hallelujah, and cursed it because it was not fruitful. He said, you can say it too if you have faith in God constantly. And he said, it'll be lifted up and thrown into the sea. You can't doubt in your heart. Talking about unlimited power of God, we can walk in unshakable faith and we mature to the level that we know that God hears us and is in his will. I'm not talking about having faith for stuff, hallelujah, that's coming from our, our, our flesh, but it's according to God's will for you. If you believe that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him in accordance with God's will. The Bible tells us what's impossible for man is impossible for man is what possible with God. It takes unshakable, shakable faith. When he told the man, when his son was going through and wrestling with a demonic spirit that was throwing him every round, way around, because the disciples could not move, and he called them, Hallelujah. He he really spoke to them in a very con not condemning, but a very strong leadership way. When he called them, you faithless generation, hallelujah. And this is why they could not, even though he mentioned some things don't come out without prayer and fasting. But he told the man, nothing is impossible for them who believe. The man said, I believe, pray for my unbelief. And I pray for our unbelief today, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will not waver in this season. But God, help our unbelief and increase our faith in you and your ability to do 
what is impossible for us, we know. We know. We don't just believe. We know. We know that it's possible for you to do, even when it doesn't look like it. Hallelujah. That you can show up like you always have. You will show up right on time in the mighty name of Jesus. Help our unbelief and increase our faith in the mighty name of Jesus. God is capable of doing it. We need to understand that now it begins to shift. The scene shifts again. Barnabas, the son of encouragement, his name means, left for Tarshish to search for Paul. Why, why this one verse lets us know, hallelujah, Barnabas, by the spirit, I believe, was led, go back and get Paul, Saul, because it is time for Saul, hallelujah, to come into an area and he needs to see and be trained and to train others in this region because I'm primarily calling him to the Gentiles. We know we can go back, I believe, to Acts uh, 9 and 30. Yes. No, yeah, 9 and 30. And the verse says, when the brothers found out about the plot, because Paul, when they accepted him, remember, uh, he started preaching and he was debating uh, between uh, back and forth with the Hellenist Jews. And they, what he was saying, they didn't agree with. And they were trying to take him out, right? And so the brothers said, okay, we find, they found out about the plot and they brought him down to Caesarea. Uh, uh, and it says they sent him off to Tarshish, his hometown. And we know Paul Saul was not quieted in his hometown, but it was God's timing for him to come into this region. Barnabas goes in and it said he searched for him. That means he had to look carefully. It, it lets us know Barnabas didn't have no address. He, he didn't know where Saul was at the time. So he had to search for Saul in Tarshish. Hallelujah. But the scriptures tell us in 26, what? Ah, yeah, when he found him, though, when he found him, he brought him back to Antioch for purpose. So we always feel like leaders, you know, you don't need training. Everything we do, me preaching to you today, is a new expanded training. It's training ground. Sister Michelle praying, training ground. You speaking and praying for your neighbors, training ground. All of it, those that are up in the pulpit, I don't care if you've been in there 35 years because the stuff that's going to show up at our altars and before you might not have seen before, heard about it, read about it in the scriptures, but to fully experience it, be so it's training ground for all of us. Now we find Saul in Antioch with all of this going on, hallelujah, to help in the planting of the church, the believers together in fellowship, together in this city, regionally, all these people groups, you can imagine, you can put some stuff together and begin to imagine because it was Syrians and it was Greeks and it was Romans and it was other people. You don't know different people's groups that now had a right to the message and you don't know the journey at this point in this text is not showing all what took place and what they had to go through. But the scripture said he brought them there for a complete year, entire year. They met with others in the church because it's important. If you're going to plant or gather a fellowship together, you need to pour into leaders. You need to identify the leaders in those regions and you need to pour into and disciple and mentor. Make sure they know because Barnabas and Saul are going to be sent away apostolically. Uh, well, by the time we get to Acts 14, I believe, God's going to send them on their first missionary journey. So they won't be there. So who's going to maintain? Who's going to continue the work? You have to pour in, identify the leaders, pour in the leaders that they will be mature enough after you leave to continue the work that you've begun. Continue the foundation. Like Paul said, I'm like a master builder, laying a foundation that each one of us, hallelujah, have to be careful based upon what we build upon the foundation of the doctrines of Christ. Jesus, hallelujah, the message of the good news that he talks about he met with others in the church. 
identifying the leaders, pouring to them, investing to them the word, mentor that, and instructed large numbers and numbers meant even common people, the laymen. I don't want to talk or be hierarchy or any of that, but God has order in his house. And it was in Antioch, it said that the disciples were first referred to as Christians. So if someone referred to you as Christians, of course, is also used, I believe, in Acts 26, is referred to as well as 1 Peter 4 and 16, that Christian is being mentioned in reference to the believers. Now we begin to shift again, shift again. And now while all that is going on, the prophets come in. So now both the apostolic and the prophetic representation is in that region. Come on, somebody. They are now present in the region. The Bible says also during the time, during this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch while he had spent this year in Antioch. Let's go to Ephesians 2 and look at what Paul says best, God's intent for the apostolic and the prophetic to be in the church and help in the building up of the saints. God intended for the foundation of the saints, the church to be built and continue for increase together as one spiritual edifice. And that's Christ's body in the earth. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. Once converted, we have to know whoever will believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Paul says, therefore, you are no longer outsiders, exiles, migrants, and aliens, excluded from the rights of citizens. But you now share citizenship with the saints, God's own people, consec consecrated and set apart for himself. And it says, you belong to God's own household. So when I say I belong to God, that's what I mean. When I'm speaking to you, you belong to God. If you are already a believer, you belong to his family. You are built upon, upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. What? With Christ, Jesus himself, the chief cornerstone. A building cannot be sustained. It cannot be held up. You build from the cornerstone. That's how you build a building, but the apostles and prophets, the presence, the representation within the church needs to be present for increased growth, increased matur maturation, and increased making sure the doctrines are being taught and preached accurately. And it says in verse 21, in him, talking about Jesus Christ, the whole structure is joined, bound, welded together, that, that get, gets rid of I'm doing my own thing because we have to, every joint has to fit and it, jo it joins us to the structure of the chief cornerstone, hallelujah, and the apostles and prophets together harmoniously and it continues to rise up because rise implies going up, grow, increase into a holy temple in the Lord, a sanctuary dedicated, consecrated, and sacred to the presence of God. We still asking for visitations. Instead of coming and growing up, so we can have habitation. That God is among us perpetually in him and in fellowship with one another. You yourselves are being built up into this structure with the rest to form a fixed abode, dwelling place of God in and by through the spirit. Verse 28 begins to explore and put emphasis on a particular prophet among the prophets that came down from Jerusalem in, uh, 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 to Antioch. And verse 28 says, one of them named Agabus stood up and he prophesied, where's the presence? The presence of the Holy Spirit is there again. He said he prophesied through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So let's just put a pin here and say, who was Agabus? He was mentioned twice in the book of Acts. He was a prophet uh, recognized from Judea. And he's mentioned twice, number one, in the text I just read in verse 28, 20, uh, uh, 28, Acts 11, verse 28, and then Acts 21, verses 10 and 11. Let's turn there real quick. 
Acts 21, verse 10 and 11, we see the other mention in the book of Acts of Agabus. In verse 10, it says, it says, as we were staying there for some time, Paul is talking, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea and coming to see us, he took Paul's wide band, belt, sash, and bound his own feet and hands. Imagine that. And said, this is what the Holy Spirit says. In this same way, the Jews in Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this band and they will hand him over to the Gentiles, the pagans. And we see in both instances, Agabus, he prophesied things that would come and they came to pass, which is a strong sign of a true prophet. That's Agabus was is showing that he was a true prophet hearing God and speaking what God is saying because number one in verse 28 hallelujah it takes a bowl you better know you heard the Holy Ghost going to leaders or anybody and telling them the world is going to face a famine not just your region not just your house but the world is going to face a famine in Acts 21 remember he told Paul you need to understand that all prophecies aren't good to hear. It's not easy on the ear, but God needs us to know. And for whatever the reason, he wants us to understand what he's doing in the land may not all sound like hidey high and holy ho and uh, we are breaking through right now. We overcoming right now. We already overcome, but we got to go through. We got to get through. It's already done. Yes, all of that, but we have to go through the process. It also spoke about Paul would suffer some danger if he continued to go on in Jerusalem. And we read that as we, and we will get to that point and study it. We read him, uh, uh, we'll read and see that Paul, hallelujah, does suffer persecution from the Jews. We also understand he ends up in prison. We're going to see that. And we also will understand as he prophesied, he will end up in Rome. What else can we learn from Agabus' account in the New Testament that shows the way of the Holy Spirit was being used through prophets in the New Testament? We know the Holy Spirit knows the Holy Spirit knows the future. The scripture said he even knows the depths of the heart of God and only can be revealed to us by the Spirit. And that's it. The Holy Spirit reveals the future and whatever God, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, whatever God of the nine gifts he wants to use through his people and through the prophets that walk in the office of the prophet and said, when the Holy Spirit, when, when, this is what the listeners, all of us need to pay attention to, when the Holy Spirit's message is received, because you don't have to receive it. You don't even have to believe it. That's why the scripture tells us, try the spirit by the spirit, but you need to be mature enough to know the spirit speaking and not just automatically through tradition and through the things that you feel like all, all prophets, all prophets are not liars. All prophets are proper line. All God's people that's prophesying are not proper line. He is speaking in this hour and those who have a ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church will bear witness and believe the word of the Lord and they will receive it. And in receiving it, it says when they receive the message, because you know when God is speaking, it will cause you to try to leave God. I got to respond to what I just heard. I got to respond to what you just said to me. Hallelujah. Even if you don't know yet what to respond on, it causes your belly and your baby to leap and say, whoa, I got to see further what God is saying to me through the word of the Lord. They're not pleasant to hear. And in this case, Agabus has the reputation in the Bible that's recorded. He spoke uh, in Antioch when the church was being planted to the Gentiles that, hey, get a famine. A famine is coming to the world. And thank God that he did. Hallelujah. Let's look further uh, at what uh, came in verse 28 and 29 and 30. It says, uh, uh, Agabus stood up and prophesied through the Holy Spirit that a severe famine, not just a famine, not just a light famine. And I think all of us can kind of relate to the process, what we've come out of the past 
uh, uh, two years of the changes and the uh, realignment and, and looking at things from a different perspective, hallelujah, things increasing through the inflation. I want to speak to you today. You are a child of God and you have to believe by that unshakable faith that if the gas go up, God is going to provide for us. He's going to provide for you. Don't worry. Don't get fret. Don't get turn up. None of that. If it goes up, ask God to open up doors for the finances to be able to have everything, not some things, but everything that you need. I didn't say want. I said need to be effective in this season. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember what is impossible for man and what you see is possible for God. It's time for us to believe him just on his word. Believe him just on his ability and begin to speak it over our lives. So he says, in the scripture, Luke makes a note of it. It did happen. And during the reign of Claudius, he's trying to tell you it didn't happen yesterday, but it did happen. The word went forth to prepare. If God's getting ready to allow or do something in the earth, he let his prophets know. He speaks to his people to warn us, to encourage us, to stir us, to instruct us, to guide us to teach us, because that's who Holy Spirit is and much more. So the disciples decided to send a contribution because what? They believed what they heard and they received it. It caused them to respond to what they heard and say, wait a minute, we're not going to leave our brothers and sisters because we are over here with more than enough. We are going to take a, they took up a contribution to sin according to the individual's ability. I love that part in there because some can give 10, some can give 100, some can give 1,000, some can give 10,000, some can get 100,000. It doesn't matter. According to your ability, do not forsake even in this season to give out of the unction of the Holy Spirit. Give to where the Holy Spirit is guiding us to give. It's time to not think about your four no more. When God tells to give, give. Give it to the word. Give it to where the anointing is flowing. Give where the need is. Give to them. You don't know where the assignment may be. We have a part to play in, even with what's going on with Ukraine, with many organizations, Christian organizations, are already being involved. We need to give it to them on the front lines that are helping them in that war-stricken place because they're suffering. We have brothers and sisters in that area that are suffering. God is protecting, but they also have needs. And they, they, they took up a contribution according to the individual's ability and to the believers who lived in Judea. They were sent to them and they said, and this they did. Sending it through the apostolic, through the, the prophetic was there, released the word, but the, apost the apostolic presence and representation, the Barnabas, they, they said the elders to take those contributions to the elders in Judea because the apostles are busy also spreading the gospel. But take it to the elders like they were set aside, like Philip and Stephen hallelujah, to do the work of the church, to do the, the, the make sure you're servicing the widows and servicing all the people in need. It said they took it to the elders and that's what Saul, Barnabas, and Saul did. Take note that he is still referred to as Saul right here. This was necessary. The prophet, the prophetic was necessary in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament today. The scriptures tells us in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, and they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat, he stood up just like Ag Agabus did and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in your God, your Lord, in the Lord your God. Hear what the Holy Spirit is putting the emphasis on. Believe, have faith in God constantly. Hallelujah. Believe in the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Know that you need the power of the Holy Spirit for anything to be fully accomplished as God intended it. And it says, and you shall be established, planted, 
establish our, our synonyms of each other. Believe and remain steadfast to his prophets and you shall prosper. Prosper is part of shalom, uh, the Hebrew word that means nothing is missing, nothing is uh, 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 broken. It means that you have peace and prosperity. Your wellness or well-being is in order. Hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus. So by the enabling of Agabus, he was able to foretell that what was coming up for the world and foretell and speak to the church for them to get ready. And the believers responded. So again, my question to you is how to the church how are we responding to what's in our generation? For our brethren, our sisters, not just UK, in our own cities. How are you and I responding? These are the messages we look in that brings conviction. It's a plumb line. In the word that calls us to be self-evaluate where we are. And then it helps us get to where we should be. So God can permit us to mature and go on and advance to more meteor, more powerful, more other the other things that He has said for us. I know y'all act like y'all don't y'all don't believe what I'm saying, but it's just not coming to you by osmosis. And you don't want to go through nothing. You don't want to give nothing. You don't want to sacrifice nothing. You don't want to deny yourself. You don't want to submit to Christ. It's not just going to come. Quit hollering out, God, give me, give me, give me. He's waiting on you to give you back to him because he already bought it through your son, through his son, Jesus the Christ. He, they said to them, so they would not suffer when the famine came. The word of God has gone forth. Prayerfully, it has informed us a little bit more as to how God laid the foundation of his church in the many regions with the intent to, to, to reach the uttermost regions of the inhabitant earth. And internet and social media are new ways to reach the ends Jesus. of the earth swiftly with the push of a button. Our point of you call in this hour, which we all are, open your mouth and know the truth and tell the truth because you don't know who God made a sign that needs to hear what he is saying through you today. What a gift, what an honor. We should all be humbled that God would entrust us with the message that broke us out of the chains and the bondage of the enemy in our minds. Because we didn't know what we were doing with fire before Jesus Christ. You might have known they don't, it might not, but you look around and say, everybody doing it. Isn't that pop culture? But listen to the Lord that's calling you out. Ecclesia, the called out ones, come out from a moment. He didn't say isolate. He said, come out of what they're doing. Don't conform to this age and their low life, immature life. Their way of doing things is considered immature in God's eyes. It's considered lower than where he's called us to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we entrust the gospel, his word, which we understand is eternal. The Bible tells us that it will last forever. So today I invite you into the family of God. If you would say yes, you the listener, you the listeners, now and later on, you may ask yourself, Lady, because you might not have got my name at the beginning, but you see my name on the screen. How can I become one of God's children? You need to understand from eternity, God 
made a way. He provided the way to free us, mankind, humanity, from the power of sin and its eternal penalty, which is eternal distance from God even now. But even then, it's eternal out of the presence of God eternally. And, and, and also to break off the power of the last enemy, which Revelations 13 and 8 tells us is death. The Bible tells us that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the universe. That's found in Revelations 13 and 8. And 1 Corinthians 15 and 26 talks about the last enemy to be subdued and abolished is death. Deuteronomy 30 and 19, God said heaven would take notice and he gave you choices, life or death, blessing or cursing, not, not choose life, choose blessings, not just for you, but for the, your, your children's 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 children, for the generations. John 3, 16, infinitely famous scripture that people might even take out of context, but for God, he did his part. So greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten son. So that whoever, see, I'm in that whoever, I don't know about you, but it's that whoever believes in his son will not perish but have everlasting life. So this is the way Romans 10 tells us to become a child of God, to become uh, receive, uh, uh, be received in the beloved and reconciled to God as your father. Verse, uh, chapter 10 of Romans, verse 9 says, because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you, that, that's saying, I recognize your power and your authority and the majesty as God. I recognize you as Lord. I submit my life to you, Jesus. And believe in your heart, not just out of mouth. You're confessing out of your mouth what you already believe in your heart when you hear the message that Jesus is my answer. He has all power. He was the only one worthy to pay the price to loose you if you come to him. Yes, he died, but God raised him from the dead, the scripture said. And if you believe that, you are saved and will be translated from darkness into the marvelous light and become uh, uh, one of God's children. Remember what John 1 and 12 says, but to as many as did receive the welcome, to as many, he gave the authority, power, privilege, right to become the children of God, that is, to whom? To those who believe, trust in, rely on, adhere to the name of Jesus Christ once again, once again, once again. Once again, once again, the word has gone forth. The invitation for you to come to Jesus has been given. Whosoever will believe. The message has gone forth. Yes, God used it, talked about what he did in the front, but he's doing it now and he's done it through the, the generations, centuries. He's constantly raised up his people to preach the message of Jesus Christ. And we in this generation is no different call because we are trusted to the word. How will you respond to it? The church, how will you respond? The unbeliever, how would you respond? The backslider, how are you going to respond? I compel you, I appeal, or come, invite you. Get back into right alignment. Get on fire, church, for the things of the kingdom. Get about our Father's business. Hallelujah. Because there's souls out there lost that are in, in position to be saved. How will you respond, unbeliever, thinking you got it going on? That your life is so temporary, it goes good for one minute, it goes nice. You may be rich, but are you happy? You may be rich, you may feel like you're free, but are you free? Do, do, do anybody really know the right story about what you're struggling with? Did you spend your life trying to hide from everybody? Your pornography and your addictions and your things that only Jesus can satisfy. You're trying to fill a void that only Jesus can satisfy. We pray that you will choose life 
and you choose Jesus as best you right now, bow your head in the mighty name of Jesus and repeat after me that you realize that you are a sinner in need of a Savior and Jesus is the answer because you realize hallelujah that he died for your sins and God raised him up on the third day so we can have life and life more abundantly that if you confess that with your life and mouth because you believe the message that went forth today in your heart that he is the one for you and you accepted him the scripture say you shall you are saved just that quick he translates you out of darkness because he converts your spirit he saves your spirit now you're able to see him and receive of him and learn of him and be free we welcome you to the body of Christ we welcome you to the father to the house of God and the household of God we welcome you today no matter what you've done Hallelujah. The enemy cannot. If you come to know who you really are in Jesus Christ through proper discipleship, he cannot accuse you and charge you of what you've done because the penalty has already been paid. Let's pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that the Holy Spirit is still in the earth realm. We thank you that the church is here. We thank you that you're working in and through the church, that you are drawing us near to Jesus Christ, where we would have truly a common union together in the earth. We thank you, Father, hallelujah, that you are married to the backsliders. And even though those that have turned their back on you, hallelujah, because maybe they didn't know, maybe they didn't understand what they had walked into, what you had brought them out, who they had become, come through the new creation, oh God. We pray by your spirit that we know you are wooing some of them back to you, that they would know you won't charge them and your arms are stretched out wide as a father that will celebrate them coming back to you, oh God, that you will leave the 99 to get the one, oh God, and that all the angels are celebrating when one is added to the kingdom, one is sold is saved. Hallelujah, from the, the, the consequences of living in sin and not being converted. Hallelujah, we pray that they will come and not be prideful. They can come to you in the privacy of their own home. They don't have to be shame among anybody looking. They can call on the name, call on the name of your son, Jesus, as the scripture said. Anyone who call on the name of Jesus shall be saved. He is the door. He is the way out. We thank you that you called us to this assignment of being on point and preaching the unadulterated word. Releasing, making the appeal for those to come. We pray that something that has been said of your word penetrated right where it's supposed to be. And they will not reject. They cannot refuse to not listen. We pray that anybody that would listen to this, even past this live uh, broadcast, that they wouldn't be able to shake. Hallelujah. Hearing you speak to them, to come to them and give their life to you through Jesus Christ. There's only one way to you, Father. And that's your son, Jesus. He is the way we thank you that you saved us. Father God, our heart is connected to yours, that you wish that none would perish, but come to repentance and have everlasting life. Do it, Lord. All our families, all our loved ones, people we don't know, just any of the ones. God, our heart and compassion is for those that have eyes have not been opened, to see your loving kindness and tender mercy that draws to repentance, to it. Do it, Lord, today. Do it, Lord, tomorrow and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you and appreciate the time that you spent with us today. May God continue to bless you and protect you. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Make him Lord over your life. Until next time, you're already blessed. Goodbye. Thank you.